Hey, thanks for stopping by my neck of the woods. I'm the gig geezer in Wood Lane, and when I'm out there driving, I'm out there to make some money. I want to help you maximize your gig hustle. Before I get started into this segment of the Gig Geezer, hey, if you like the content that's been provided, hey, hit that subscribe button and also give it a thumbs up. I also welcome your comments in the section below. Now, getting into this week's, uh, the week in review for the week of October 10, no, make that October 11 through October 17. Well, this was a challenging week for the Gig Geezer. And I say that because the gig geezer got off to his worst start in, of the year. I had my worst day on October 11 when I finished at $152.15. Yes, now some people may say, hey, I'd love to have $150 in my market. And I'm not mad at you, and I get it. But for the gig geezer in this market here in South Carolina, specifically Columbia, that for me has been my worst day of the year. It just seemed nothing went right for me that day. Just nothing. There was just a dead vibe around wherever I went. There weren't many orders coming in. Um, the orders that I got um, sometimes just didn't go right. It was just not a good day. And so when you have days like that, as based on my experience in many other endeavors, you have to have a short memory. And so when I got up the next day on October 12, I was hoping to improve upon a bad day. Well, I finished that day at $189.87. Yes, um, it was an improvement. No, it did not hit my often stated goal of 200 a day. But if I were to go based on percentage, it was actually just shy of 25% improvement. It was actually 24% in change. So you have to, you have to kind of, you, can, you have to kind of take for what it is. It was an improvement and something to try to build on. Of course, my goal was always to average $200 a day. And so that's where I'll get at by the end of this um, segment of the Gig Geezer. Um, on Wednesday, the 13th, if you remember in my last Geezer Week in Review segment, I mentioned on October 4th that uh, Grubhub placed my account on pause in effect, a temporary suspension because of supposedly suspected uh, suspected activity. They said that I had an inordinate amount or a high number of orders in which I accepted, held onto them, and then canceled them. So they were getting on me for a high cancellation, a spike in cancellations. Well, it took me four, four phone calls to Grubhub and two responded emails before they decided to lift my suspension or rein, reinstate me. And so on Wednesday, October 13, I was back on the Grubhub app. And on that particular day, let's see here. On that particular day, it seemed like the vibe changed. It was, I was at full capacity in terms of all my apps, at least my five main apps that I use, which include DoorDash, Bite Squad, Instacart, and Uber Eats. And so I finished that day um, working half a day, a half a hustle, the evening hustle. I, in three and a half hours, I did $113.68. So I'm kind of, we're, we're kind of treading some water here. Um, I'm not going to say I'm showing improvement yet, but I'm treading some water and hopefully working towards that goal of mine of 200 a day. So, Thursday on the 14th, I finished at $229.64. Friday um, the 15th, I did $226.65. Now, I did have an interesting thing that occurred towards the end of Friday's hustle, specifically the evening hustle. First of all, I had two orders that I stacked together, one from Uber Eats and from uh, DoorDash. The first was DoorDash. It was an order and pay at a Bed Bath & Beyond for $28.25. And it was, it was a little bit of a hike now. I'm not gonna kid you, it was a hike. But when you're getting towards the end of the night and you're looking to go home and you see a 28.25, 
you give it a, you give it a good you give it a good look, and that's what I did. Now, once I got into the parking lot of Bed Bath and Beyond, I also got a Uber Eats uh, order that was going to go along the way to the DoorDash drop off for ten dollars and thirty um, nine cent. So um, that was basically a forty dollar swing, which put me at the two twenty six number. Um, now, the other thing that occurred, now I don't know if it happened for anyone else though, but I had some serious T-Mobile issues. Now, when I tell folk that I, I've been a T-Mobile customer going all the way back to the days of Suncom, which is back in 2003, a lot of folk laugh at me. And, you know, well, on this particular night, you had reason to laugh at me because I, the network got so bad, I could not connect into any of my apps. The only way I could connect into any of my apps was if I was on a Wi-Fi, which meant that I was back home. So upon completing the DoorDash order, I had to contact DoorDash to mark the order as delivered. So we move into Saturday. Now, going into um, Saturday, um, I was at uh, 900 and $19, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in the low $900 range going into um, Saturday and Sunday. Now, $1,400 would, would be a gettable goal if I had, if I put together two solid days. And $1,400 would also equal, at least making the $1,400 plateau would also equal what I did the previous week in which I did $1,439 and change. So I'm thinking maybe there's a chance to get there, maybe there not be. Well, now, halfway into my Saturday evening hustle, I'm getting some orders and I'm getting, and I'm starting to build up a pretty good number. And by the way, I will tell you already that I made 272.12 that on, on Saturday the uh, 16th. But halfway in, I accepted a stacked DoorDash order to Zagby and a place called JR Cash Bar and Grill. And it was for $21.50. Well, I marked the orders as arrived and I go over to Zagby first, which is just basically across the street on, or on the other side of the stoplight from JR Cash. I get over there and there's 12 cars wrapped around that building. Could have been more, but it was at least 12 cars. So that was a no-go. I'm not gonna stay, I'm not gonna sit in line for something like that. No. I already had JR Cash and Grill for 1125, so you do the math with 1150. So both of them were 1125. Well, one of them was for 1025, the other was for 1125. So you get it. So I head back over to JR Cash, I get that order, and as I'm heading out, I get a Grubhub order and pay. Now, with order and pays, as with um, Uber Eats, you have the possibility of contacting the restaurant to call in the order, and then you can go by and pick it up. Pick it up. That's if orders do, if, if some restaurants do allow for that, or if you're able to get in. Well, I contact the restaurant. It was a um, Mexican restaurant, and um, the order consisted of two um, creamy chicken empanadas, two uh, taco de pollo, and then some type of chocolate cake. Well, the lady tells me that they have no creamy chicken empanadas and then no chicken tacos. They do have chicken carnitas. So that meant that I would have to contact the customer. Now, typically when you have items that are not able to be fulfilled, especially with an order and pay, you are, it is, it is recommended that you contact support. In this case, I contacted Grubhub and I speak to someone who tells me that he can't not cancel the order. And so he has to get in contact with the customer and let them know what's going on. Well, the customer tells the, the support person that she had ordered the same thing just a day before. And so she was insistent that the restaurant had these items. And so he gets back with me and I'm telling him, hey, look, man, I wouldn't contact support if they didn't have the items. So we've got to do something about this. So he tells me that you should, you're, going to be, you're going to be getting a text message soon with uh, the substitutions that the person wants. And again, I cannot cancel you out of this order. 
So basically, um, I'm not thinking fully through this situation, mainly because I just came out of a suspension. I did not need to be holding an order for as long as I had at this point, about 15, 20 minutes, and then canceling out, which may trigger that red flag and a deactivation. So I'm thinking, I got it, I got it, I got to deal with this as best as I can. And so I get, I get the text message from the lady and she's asking for then chicken empanadas and then she'd have the chicken carnitas. Well, I, I, I try to go with that and I contact the restaurant again and they tell me they have no chicken empanadas. And so then I called the lady through the, through the app, or at least I used the number that I can contact the customer and let her know that th there's no chicken empanadas. And so she comes back with another item, so another chicken type item. And so I'm thinking now, this has gone too far. I've already dropped off the DoorDash order. I'm trying to get myself back in a position for more orders and I got to get out of this, hopefully. And so I told her, I'll get back with you and see what happens. Right after that, I contact DoorDash, I contact GrubHub support and I speak to a different person. And this guy, thank you, <laughs> this guy says, no man, I'm paraphrasing, but he basically says, no man, this order should have been canceled. That guy did it wrong. The policy is that when you have an order in pay and the restaurant does not have the items, you are to then have the order canceled because the substitutions could be more than what was initially allotted on the card. And so if, if it costs more than what was initially allotted on the card, and then the card is going to decline, and then I'm gonna to have to call and have the order canceled anyway. So he bailed me out of a bad situation. And of course he documented everything. And so I was off the hook with that order. And I went on and again, I finished at 272.12. So now I've got some pretty, I've got pretty strong number going into Sunday. I'm at 1184 and change. And so if I have a typical gig geezer day, I'm at $1,400. And so actually what ended up happening is that I had a typical gig geezer day. And when I thought that I was finished after about seven hours, I had miscalculated my numbers. I was actually at 1399.33. And I'm thinking, how do I tell um, my, my, the people who are on my gig geezer channel that I actually was at 1399.33, 67 cents short of actually a $1,400 week again. Well, I'm hoping that someone would come through with a with a nut with an extra tip. And that's what happened on my last order, which was a stacked order. Um, the person came through with an extra four dollars on the tip and it put me over the top at fourteen hundred and three dollars for the week. Well, it's not so much as me taking a victory lap though, but I'm just sharing what had happened with the geezers week in review. So I've managed to put together for the first time since July consecutive fourteen hundred dollars a week putting in six and a half days and for all you hour dollar per hour people it was actually at 42 hours that I put in for those six and a half days but what I think about is my average per day which was 215.89 the week before I was at 221 and change and so a couple of you know solid weeks as you might say um, my best paying order was my last order on Saturday the 17th it was a stacked order that paid $54.02. And then my lowest single paying order was a DoorDash for $8, which was on, on October 13th. So we go through the numbers, breaking them down a little further. DoorDash for the week, according to the app, I was at 466.07. Grub up for the week, um, that partial week, I was at 131.80. Uber, we, Uber Eats, I was at 451.79. Uh, Bike Squad, 123.62. And for Instacart, I had 205.73. Um, 
I don't have much expectations for this week coming up. I know that there's going to be one day I'm not going to go out there at all. So we're talking at best six days, but the goal will still be to finish at $1,200 or better or $200 a day. With that, I'm in with Lane and may your hustle continue. Thank you for checking out this segment of the Geek Teaser. If you like the content that's been provided, hey, hit that subscribe button. Also, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or useful information that you'd like to pass on to the Gig Geezer, I can be reached at giggeezer3.5 at gmail.com.